All right, this is part three of our in-depth exploration of steering behaviors. And in this video, the behavior we're going to be looking at is the flee behavior, making our sprite flee from a target, run away from something. So here we are again with our standard uh, random mob running across the screen. And what we want to do this time is I want to make the mob flee or avoid the mouse pointer. So when the mouse pointer gets close, it's going to run away. And so with flee, we could have it see, you know, infinitely far like we did with the, with the seek, but that gets kind of crazy because then everywhere on the screen, it's always trying to go off the sides because it's always fleeing the mouse. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to make a, a radius around the mouse pointer. And inside of that radius is where the flea behavior will take over. Um, you can think of it as the distance the mob can see, right? And when it sees that it's getting close to whatever it's trying to avoid, it's going to avoid it. Okay, so we're going to set a flea radius. And let's just make that 200 pixels. Okay, so that's going to be the size of the circle around the mouse pointer that we're going to flee. Okay, so let's define that flee behavior. So what the flee is going to do is it's going to figure out, again, just like usual, the steering vector, right? So the default value of that's going to be zero, right? We're not going to be turning if we're too far away from the mouse. So what we need to do is we need to figure out how far away is the mouse. So we're going to take this, the mob's position minus the target, and now we have that arrow pointing from the target to the position. And if you remember from our seek uh, video, we did target minus position, right? Because we wanted the arrow pointing from the mob to the target. This time we have the arrow pointing from the target to the mob because we want to flee away, right? So this is going to be pointing the opposite direction. It's going to be pointing away from the target. And if that distance, the length of that distance vector is less than the flee radius, then now we know we need to flee. So self.desired is going to be that distance that we just figured out normalize times max speed, which is the same as we did in the seek. Remember, we're doing, we're pretty much doing the same thing we did in the seek behavior, except we're doing it in the opposite direction. Steer will just be desired minus velocity. And if the length of the steer is greater than the max force, then we'll just scale it. OK. Um, and then uh, to draw the, you know, let's set a default. desired just so that we don't get an error message with drawing our vectors. Okay, so that's our flea to, that's our flea behavior. If you're close enough to whatever the target is, I forgot to pass the target, then you're going to then you're going to run away from it. Okay, so we can put that into our update that self.acceleration is just going to be flea and then the target is going to be position of the mouse. And I've just added to the draw vectors here a line to draw the circle so we can see the flea radius ourselves. So let's run this and you're going to see the mob running away from the mouse. If I turn on the vectors you can see that when it crosses that line it starts running away. And I can chase it around and it's always trying to get away. Now something you might notice though is that if it comes in a little bit 
All right, you see that? Now its speed is much slower because it stopped fleeing as soon as it got outside the ring. And you can be left with a mob that has a very low, uh, a very low speed if you time it just right. There we go. You saw that. So, so what we'd like to also do is have the concept of a default speed. And the default speed should be the maximum speed, right? So if there's no behavior acting on it, if there's no flea force acting on it, and it's going slower than the max speed, then its desire should be to accelerate up to the max speed. And so we can add that into our flea behavior uh, by just setting the, instead of having our desire be zero here, we're just going to say, right, if it's, if we're closer than the free ra flea radius, this is our desired. But otherwise, our desired is going to be whatever our velocity is scaled up to max speed. And then we can actually unindent these things, right? And so, so now our steering vector becomes away from the mouse if we're close to it, or away from the target if we're close to it, and otherwise just keep accelerating up to the max speed if you're not going the max speed. And then that's going to give us our steer. So now if we turn that back on, you can see if I try and get him off the edge, see he accelerates back up to his maximum speed. Right, and I've added a function here that when I press M, it's going to spawn a new mob. So if I spawn a whole bunch of them, you can see they're all trying to flee away from the mouse. All right, by now you should be starting to see some of the power of these uh, various steering behaviors. Um, with a relatively small amount of code, you know, really simple code, we can produce um, the impression that we've created some really complex AI system. And that's the nature of what's called emergent behavior. Right, simple rules interacting together, producing a complex result. Um, and it should also be hopefully apparent to you that uh, none of this would be nearly as simple if we weren't using uh, vectors and all of the nice things like you know length and normalize and scale that come along with vectors um, and vector math that would be really a huge difficult process if we were doing this with individual X and Y components and trigono trigonometric functions and, and all that kind of stuff. It would be uh, it would be really hard to keep track of. So vectors are really powerful when it comes to things like this. Okay, that'll do it for this video. Fleeing is a pretty simple process. Um, in the next video, we're going to continue talking about um, steering behaviors, and we're going to talk about uh, avoiding obstacles, uh, things like walls. How do you keep from running into the wall and go around obstacles that get in your way? All right, and I'll see you next time. Please hit the like button below and subscribe for the next video. Thanks.